Well, I can't keep quiet about Final Fantasy any longer. What's up, guys? I'm the Dorky Deviant. Now let's talk about some Final Fantasy 16. Hell yeah! As a longtime Square fan, and just judging from the company's recent behavior and language, Final Fantasy 16 on the PlayStation 5 was the announcement we needed. I, for one, was starting to get concerned the past few years that Final Fantasy VII Remake was Square's only Final Fantasy priority for now. And after FF7 Remake dropped, I immediately started thinking, well, that's behind us now. What's next for the series outside of Remake Part 2? This Final Fantasy XVI announcement alleviates those concerns. And we can all take a deep breath and sigh of relief that Square, at the very least, seems to have its priorities straight and that driving the next main installment of the series into the future and not just concentrating on FF7 Remake is important to not only the Final Fantasy franchise, but also for Square Enix and all its endeavors. Let's face it, Final Fantasy is the heart and soul of Square Enix worldwide and its most important franchise. Good on Square for announcing it like this, and I really appreciate the transparency of knowing that this game will be on PS5 before the console is even out. In my mind, that is big. However, there are concerns and plenty of questions, one of the big ones being, when will this even come out? We all remember the development hell that Kingdom Hearts 3, FF15, and FF7 Remake fell into, and I would definitely like to think Square knows they have to avoid a scenario like that at all costs, because the gaming community absolutely buried them for it. And considering that this is the trend for three games in a row now, it's difficult to tell what to make of Final Fantasy XVI's release timeline prior to the launch of the PS5. Well, the game looked fairly far along and its visuals were stunning as per usual, and the fact we got a little combat was also a good sign. However, with no UI or HUD menus and text selections present during gameplay, that could mean it's still an early build. I would love to say 2021 could be in the cards for this, and just LOL to a 2021 release altogether, but the director of the game, Hiroshi Takai, stated, it may still be some time before we can get it into your hands. So 2022 or 2023 and beyond is probably the safest bet for now, with a huge asterisk beside it. Next thing is Final Fantasy XVI has kind of bucked Square's usual development structure. For those that aren't aware, Square has different divisions that develop their games. Previously, Square's Creative Business Unit 1, led by longtime Final Fantasy producer Yoshinori Kitase, and more specifically, Business Division 1 development team, was tasked with development of the single-player mainline Final Fantasy projects. But if you noticed in the Final Fantasy XVI trailer, it says Creative Business Unit 3 which up until now mainly focused on MMORPGs and is led by Final Fantasy XIV director Naoki Yoshida, who is a producer on FF16. So what that means is the Final Fantasy MMORPG team has been given Final Fantasy XVI to make a single player game while the traditional single player team can work on Final Fantasy VII Remake basically what it comes down to. That said, we should expect some nods to Final Fantasy XI and XIV sprinkled in. This is definitely evident from Final Fantasy XVI's more medieval fantasy traditional RPG setting, which I'm totally here for. Knowing this isn't the usual main entry team could be a note of caution though, but Creative Business Unit 3 has done such a good job with the mega popular Final Fantasy XIV, can they recreate the magic for this single player game? Now let's talk about what this announcement means for the franchise, which mainly concerns Final Fantasy VII Remake series, because it's the only other main FF project in the works as of now. So FF7 Remake seems like the elephant in the room here. Part 1 came out on PS4 earlier in 2020, and with that console soon to be going by the wayside, and no real news about Part 2 since Part 1's release, it seems FF7R's transition to the PlayStation 5 is inevitable. Now, with the PS4 backwards compatibility of the PS5, it's not clear whether FF7R will have PS5 enhancements or just a flat-out port of Part 1 with the subsequent parts launching on PS5 or both PS4 and PS5. Will we be able to play the entirety of the Final Fantasy VII Remake project all on PS4? I highly doubt it. With that said, I think Final Fantasy XVI is a perfect segue to bridge the gap for Final Fantasy VII Remake and get people onto the PS5 so Remake's transition to the next generation is a little smoother. I personally thought releasing FF7R Part 1 on PS4 was a bold and a bit of a confusing move coming out the same year the PS4's successor would be released, but that's the situation they got themselves into, delaying the game to the degree they did. I'll say this, the FF7R timed exclusivity on PS4 ending on 3-3-2021, as stated on the game case, is probably the hint to greater things. 
And I think the final thought here is what will come out first, FF7 Remake Part 2 or FF16? They have revealed FF16 first, but it's not clear if that means it will come out first. Could FF16 be further along than FF7 Remake Part 2, or is Square holding back on FF7 Remake information while the dust is still settling around Part 1? We will have to wait for that, but the answers to those questions is definitely what we can expect moving forward. I will remain cautiously excited, mainly just happy to see something new from the series and a glimpse at the next game. I hope it can live up to expectations and steer Final Fantasy back in the right direction, and it looks to have that potential. It's definitely exciting. So, let's hear you guys' thoughts in the comments. Was this revealed too early? Is Square squaring once again? Or do you think Square has finally gotten over the hump? I want to hear it. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for the watch, and we'll catch you later.